Hi, welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Bob Flisser. If you do any project management, you'll eventually need to create a Gantt chart. A good Gantt chart illustrates the life cycle of individual tasks that make up a project. If you build a house, for example, a Gantt chart can illustrate the time it takes to procure the site, get permits, buy materials, hire workers, connect utilities, and so on. There are also relationships involved. You can't start work without permits or have workers show up before materials arrive. A Gantt chart will also tell you how much of each task is complete and how much left there is to do. So what I'll show you here is how to create a Gantt chart from a simple bar chart. What you want to start off with doing is enter the data that you see I have here on the screen. You see we have task names, we have starting dates, how many days are completed and how many days are left remaining. Now if you don't want to type this all in, you want to save some time, you could download the file that I've already created for you you can see up here it's called Gantt Starting Data. So to insert the chart, first thing you want to do is click anywhere here in the data area. It doesn't matter which cell you click on, any one is good. And charts are things that we insert, so let's go over here to the Insert tab. Now I'm recording this in Excel 2016 on Windows 10. If you're using a previous version, then some of the icons and dialogues will look a little bit different, but the general concepts are the same. So let's go over here in the Insert tab, we have the Charts section, and let's click this first small one here, click the drop down, and you see you have 2D and 3D column charts. We're interested here in the 2D bar charts. And the second one here is the one we want, and that is a stacked chart. So click that, it inserts a chart automatically, and let's move the chart, I'm just gonna drag the whole chart down here. And I wanna stretch it out, so let's scroll here a little bit and stretch it out. There we go, that looks good. And let's format it a little bit. When you have the chart selected, you see you're on the Design tab of the Chart Tools section here on the ribbon. If you don't see that, it probably just means you've clicked off on the background worksheet. Notice what happens. If I click on one of the cells here on the worksheet, those tabs go away. As soon as I click the chart, those tabs come back. So you wanna be on the Design tab Click that little drop down and you can see different formats and you can roll the mouse over them and get previews. I want this one here, this reversed out. I think this is gonna work best for this exercise. So click that. And if you wanna change the colors, that's okay. See over here where it says change colors. You could click that and this will change individual colors. Or if you want a color monochromatic theme, you could do one of those and that's fine. I'm just gonna leave the default colors. You could do it uh, however you like. So now we have to do a little bit of tweaking. You notice that each bar is showing us three sections. We have what I have here as blue bars. That's showing us the length of time before the project starts. The middle bars here, the red ones, show us the number of days completed, and the green bars are showing us how many days are left to do. Well, the length of time before the project starts is kind of meaningless. That's, you know, since the beginning of the universe. So we can't actually delete them, but we're gonna make them invisible. So click any one of them. And when you do that, you wanna go over here to the Format tab. So on the Format tab, there are three things that we wanna do. Number one, we wanna get rid of the fill. So over here where it says Shape Fill, click that and choose No Fill. You see we still have an outline and a shadow. So let's go over here to Shape Outline and choose No Outline. And over here for Shape Effects, you see we have shadow options and the very first one is no shadow. And I'll just click on the chart background so you could get a better look. So now that's all invisible. So that's a good first step, but even though the bars are invisible, they're still kind of there. And what we want to do is for the earliest task, or task one, we want that to be the starting date. So we want to bring that over to the left margin and then all of the other bars need to shift over accordingly. So let's click one of the dates down on here, and then we're still in the Format tab. We wanna click over here, Format Selection, and that brings up this task pane on the right. So what we wanna do is put the date of the earliest start date as the minimum date. Now, when you're looking at this, you see this kind of weird five-digit number, and you might wonder, well, what, what the heck kind of date is that? If you're not familiar with the way Excel handles dates, all dates have individual serial numbers. That's how we can go and do math on dates, adding and subtracting and all that. So if we scroll up here, we can see the earliest date 
is March 2nd, 2016. And you can see the latest starting date is June 24th, 2016. Okay, so let's scroll down. And we want to set that minimum date as March 2nd. So you don't have to know what the serial number of that date is. That's really cool. So we can just kind of select that, delete, and let's put in, I'll just type in a short date, 3 slash 2 slash 2016. And when I hit the tab key, it changes to that serial number. Hit the tab key one more time and we'll set the maximum date. And I will set that to July 1st, 2016. 7 slash 1 slash 2016. And again, hit the tab key. So you see these all kind of stretch out. It looks a little nicer. It's easier to look at. And you don't have to worry about those serial numbers. Now, when we're looking at this, you see that task one, the earliest task, is on bottom here. Maybe you want task one to be at the top. That's kind of more logical. So let's click any of these task names. This is the vertical axis. When you roll your mouse over it, you may see this little pop-up that's telling you it's the vertical axis. So with that selected, we're still here in the Format tab on the ribbon. Click over here, Format Selection. And you may need to scroll down here on the task pane. You see where it says Categories in Reverse Order? Click that and now you can see task one is on the top. But when it does that, you notice it puts the date back up on the top of the chart. Maybe you want the dates back down at the bottom. So click any of those dates, and you may see the little pop-up that's telling you it's the horizontal axis. And again, over here, click Format Selection. And here in the Task pane, scroll down if you need to, and you see over here where it says Labels? There's a little twirly arrow. Click that, and you see where it says Label Position? Right now it says next to axis. Click that, and these are not intuitive at all. You want to choose the position high. <laughs> high means it puts it low down on the bottom. And again, I'll just click on the background to get rid of it so you can get a better look. Still a few other tweaks we want to make. We're done with the formatting task pane, so you could click this X here to close it. And you see, even though we got rid of those starting bars, we still have start date in the legend. This is showing us the red and the green completed and remaining, but the start date we want to get rid of. So you could just click the legend. The first time you click, it selects the entire legend. Click a second time on start date, and you see that's highlighted, and you could just hit the delete key. That gets rid of it, and you see the spacing adjusts. That's really nice. And also, let's give this a title. Chart title isn't much of a title, so again, it's two clicks. Click once to highlight it. Click again. You can select it, and I'll just give it a name. I'll call this important project and click off it. So that's cool, huh? We have now a fully functional, really nice Gantt chart in Excel. But wait, there's more. I said at the beginning that there are relationships here, like you have to get permits before working or get materials before the workers show up. So what if you need to create a relationship between the end of task one and the beginning of task two? For example, maybe there should be a two-day gap between them, or maybe a five-day overlap. So we'll put a formula in the data to do that. So let's scroll up here so we can see the numbers. So over here, this March 6, that's in cell B5, let's just take that and we'll delete. And instead of it, notice when you do that, it actually deletes the bar here. But we're going to put in a formula. We're going to put in a two-day gap. So we'll start off with an equal sign, and we'll say equals the start date of task one plus the days completed plus the days remaining plus two. So we have those days plus that two-day gap, press enter, and now you can see we have the starting date, and you can see in here in the chart there's a two-day gap between the ending of this and the beginning of that. Or what if you want a five-day overlap? Let's just edit this formula. I'll double click that instead of plus two. Let's change that to minus five and enter it. And now you see that date changes. And when you look at the bars, you can see there's that five day overlap. And now if you want, you can play around with this all you like by putting in formulas for the date. I'm going to save this file so you can play around with a completed one. And I will call this Gantt project complete. And you can download this and play around all you like. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Once again, my name is Bob Flisser.
and I'll see you next time.